our men and women in the armed forces. Thank you. Dr. Shiboy? Sure. You're on. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank the Village Board for allowing the district to come and once again just speak briefly about the upcoming school budget vote. With us we have Ms. Lawless, President of the Board, Ms. Odell, uh, Board Trustee. We have Joe Lenz, who's our Assistant Superintendent for Business, and Michael McElduff, who is our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, and Technology. As always, I'd just like to give a, a brief overview for the board. Uh, this year's budget uh, represents a 0% uh, increase in the tax levy, yet a 3.99% increase budget to budget, totaling $3.6 roughly million dollars, and maintains all of our athletics, academics, and extracurricular programs. Some of the budget drivers that have uh, led to the increase are we're uh, adding we're proposing to add an additional social worker and special educator to deal with the special education needs and the social emotional needs of the students and that adds to the increase in salaries. In addition, we have uh, an increase in health costs this year, um, as always, um, but uh, I'm sure that the village has that with its employees and increase in retiree costs as well. We're anticipating some increases in uh, heating and fuel costs, as again, I think most of us are. We've also added this year a $100,000 to the budget that would take care of a capital outlay. That is uh, money that the district would put out and then would get aid on the following year. It is maxed at $100,000 in a year. Uh, so we're proposing that the following year, that same outlay would cost us approximately $18,000 because we would get 82 uh, cents on the dollar back for doing a project such as this. We do anticipate increased transportation costs once again uh, due to fuel increases. The budget does maintain all of our programs. Uh, it maintains uh, the increase that we had last year in equipment. We had for years not purchased any other equipment than we could get from a member item from State Senator, then State Assemblyman Skoufis, or uh, Senator uh, Larkin when he was, I don't want to say handing out, but was giving money out to municipalities and school districts for specific items. Uh, but the district last year added $130,000 for equipment replacement, and we've started that process, and we intend, uh, with the voter support, to keep that in there. Uh, we do anticipate maintained uh, revenue or uh, flat revenue for impact aid, uh, and as the community is aware, we were successful in securing a 10-year uh, contract with DODEA for the education of the West Point-related uh, children, uh, high school-aged children. Uh, the district uh, is not using fund balance this year, but it's instead using uh, some of its reserves, so uh, TRS reserve to make up for TRS costs. Um, that's what the reserves are for, so those are supposed to be floating reserves, and we anticipate uh, using those. And again, once again, we're looking at a 0% increase in the tax levy this year. So I'll take questions from the board if there are any. That's very good. With no increase. Yeah, yeah, again, uh, there's Sorry. spending increases, but we are in a year where we anticipate spending increases. It's hard. We are fortunate that finally the state has made good on its foundation aid formula. It had not done so for uh, the first decade that that formula existed and started to make it up last year. Who's so. that the one we cleared 9.9? Yeah, we got 9.9% yeah, increase in foundation aid, yes. Questions? Any questions from anyone? Can I say two things? You had two points. Of course. One is that I know some community members have made comments and questions about what does this do for next year, and we do expect our our increase 
the state promised us our increase in state aid next year, so we're hoping to be able to put out a very fair budget again next year. Um, knowing that, and we're planning on that, we do very well with the help of Joe and our administrators to plan ahead so we can keep all of our programs running because we're not just putting out a good budget last year and a good budget this year and then plan to slam our community next year. That's not what we do. So we're really planning to be able to put out a fiscally responsible budget next year and keep on looking forward to doing that, and that's what we do. We're trying to plan ahead. Um, keep programs going, but also be responsible. Um, we don't know what's going to happen a couple years from now. No one does. You guys don't. We don't, but we're, we're trying to plan ahead. Also on our facilities, we're trying to plan ahead so we can do stuff and, and buy purchases now that we can afford. We're still um, going to accept any bullet aid or aid that we can get um, and use it wisely for things that we need on upkeep. We're working with our um, contractors and our, help me, architecture. our architectures to look at a project at our fourth school that we're desperately in need of for upcoming in the, in the near future. We're trying to sock money away for that. So we're looking at all these things because we know our community wants it. We know they need it. So we're working on that as well. So we're trying. And we're still fighting for our impact aid. We spent a lot of time this year on the West Point contract. We got it. Ten years is huge. We're going to work hard to maintain and keep that. So, um, but please, if you have any questions, call us at the school. Ask your building principals. We'll reach out and get you the answers that you need so you can make a responsible decision when you come out to vote. Um, make your decision on voting for the budget. And the election is May 17th. And yeah. there are four seats. Uh, two Four candidates running for two seats. You hired a social worker? We will be, yes. We hired one this year. We'll be hiring again. And, and what else? Uh, special special education. Education. teacher. We know there's a lot of social and emotional needs we, in the district due to the COVID and other. They are predicting that the schools are now going to be asked to do more counseling and psychological yes. services Absolutely. than the normal functions within hospitals and counselors. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a raise again. Yep. And then, yep. That's why we. That's why we had to make room for those two positions. Yeah. Just have a question. Yes. What is the usual turnout of people who come out to vote? In number wise? Yeah. Um, between six and eight hundred. Is that right? Yes. Isn't that dismal? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's small. And, and you know small. what, too, right? Melanie? When a budget has a zero percent increase in taxes, we even get less sometimes. Is that right? Yeah, it's so sad. That's why I really want to make a push this year and get people because they have it's their it's their budget. This it's is one of the budgets exactly that right. it's, it's one of their right. budgets that they get that they have a say in. It's the budget. It's the budget. They have a say in. Come out and vote. You have a say in it. So please come out and vote. Look at it. Look at the papers. We're gonna be sending out the budget mailer soon. Look at it. It doesn't take long. Just take a look. We make it as, you know, take a look and please come out and vote. That's right. That's less than 25%. Okay, register on Saturday? Saturday is Saturday this coming, thank you, Kristen. Mm -hmm. This coming Saturday, anyone who isn't registered to vote can go to the library and they have a open registration. Mm -hmm. And individuals thank you. needing an absentee ballot can request one in the Online. office of the district clerk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, did you see anybody, um, the study that they did on developing brains and time on screen? Because of COVID, the kids were locked down yes. on screen six, seven, eight hours a day. They're still doing it mostly in the school. I'm wondering if you're going to start transitioning off of being in the Chromebook all day in school. So I would imagine that most teachers have begun that transition already, Kat, because we all recognize that kids were on screens for far too long. I've been on screens for too long. And boards have been on screens for too long. So, uh, you know, Michael's here. Uh, he's been working with the teachers and the principals to make sure that our instruction moves back to pre-COVID uh, types. Um, you know, it, it changed a lot, but what it didn't change is how important this kind of conversation is as opposed to this type of conversation, this type of work. So, yeah, I agree 100%. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you take, letting us have this time to come yeah, and talk because 
this gets out. We're all in it. Yeah. I'd like to say I'll be here next year, but this may be my last presentation for y'all as I'm retiring. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for waiting. Thank so thank you. No, no, it's okay. We're going to be anyway. But thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public comment on agenda items or any other issues. Is there no public comment? It's now. Okay. You're, you're okay there if you want. Okay. Um, uh, very simply, a um, lot of questions, um, not a lot of answers. Um, laws about village government are finite. Um, and though the destruction of concept of an honest and fair election, the people of Highland Falls deserve to have more oversight. A vote of no confidence is, confidence is not an option, so until the mayor resigns or is found not guilty, I implore the deputy mayor and trustees to pay close attention. I further humbly ask for the trustees to motion and vote yes to hiring a forensic auditor to help boost confidence in the building board. have a budget amendment uh, here, whereas the Village Board approved at the March 7, 2022 meeting to appropriate surplus funds of $75,000 for the rehabilitation of the South Street Wall. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees approves an increase to line A-5990 appropriated fund balance of 70510 and an increase in expense code of A-5110-04 street maintenance contractual of 70510 for the rehabilitation of South Street Wall for fiscal year 2021-2022. I need a motion to do that. Make a mo <clears throat> I'll make the motion. It actually came in $4,500 approximately less than we anticipated. That's great. Second. Second. May I have roll call? Trustee Guerrero? Uh, yes, but I do have a question. Do we already have the numbers for how much we went over the budget in for last year? We're still in, in the bit we are still in the budget for twenty one twenty two. So no So we don't have the total yet of how much we went over budget. The total or a certain line? The total. No, we wouldn't have we, we probably won't have we won't have that till actually September. I was September. gonna say September. Right. But yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Trustee Hour? <laughs> yes. Trustee DeSalvo? Yes. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Mayor Dinoffi. Yes. Motion carries. All right, we have bills and claims for 2021-2022 of $195,892.26. The bills have been reviewed downstairs, I believe. Motion. Second. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Um, we have two meetings. Uh, let me just ask the board, were, was everyone at both of these? No. No. Which... I was on the April 23rd. April 23rd. Doing separate. No, I think. Doing separate. Doing separate? Okay. That was the reason. Okay, so um, we have the regular meeting. We had a regular meeting on April 18, 2022. Um, to, uh, minutes have been typed up. May I have approval for those minutes? Motion. Second for the 18th. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, um, uh, could I have a motion to approve a special meeting on April 23, 2022? So moved. Second. 
May I have a roll call? Trustee Guerrero? I wasn't there. Trustee yes. Alward? Yes. Trustee DeSalvo? Yes. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Mayor DiNacchio? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the, on the agenda is uh, Officer Rip over there. No. Um, next on the agenda is the appointment of James Rippett as a full-time police officer effective May 3, 2022 at a salary of $56,897, which is a step one of the PBA contract with 78 weeks maximum probation approved by the Orange County Civil Service as recommended by the officer in charge, Sergeant Torby. So moved. Second. Second by Gary. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Next is adoption of our what the school just came to us about our budget. Our budget for those in the room starts June 1. We don't do the calendar year. We go from June 1 to May 31. So um, this has been worked on and uh, meet a lot of meetings, a lot of discussion. Um, took some things out, put some things in. And the uh, resolution is as follows. Resolved that the annual budget of the Village of Holland Falls fiscal year 22-23 be adopted as follows. General fund balance budget in the amount of $5,579,183. The water budget in the amount of $1,105,869. And in the sewer fund budget in the amount of $1,013,046. Be it further resolved that water rates shall remain at $88 minimum for the first 5,000 gallons and the current rate of 463 per 1,000 gallons afterwards for the May 22 water billing cycle. And be it further resolved that the water rate be, will increase to $95 minimum for the first 5,000 gallons and the current rate of $4.63 per 1,000 gallons thereafter for the November 2022 and May 2023 water billing cycle. And be it further resolved that the sewer rate shall remain at 185% of the immediate previous water bill. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall take place immediately if adopted. May I have a motion? Make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. May I have a roll call? Trustee Guerrero? No, I vote no. Because they have a comment about this. I want to remind people that this is where the power of the board is. Okay? This millions of dollars that you give us to control. To control, to hire people, to fire people, to uh, put out bids and accept bids, to give contracts out. This is where the power is of this board and this millions of dollars that you give us. So you really should really put us at high standards when we spend it for you, okay? You should expect us to really manage it well. And this budget has hundreds of thousands of dollars in it that we could actually cut so that we can save you money, so we could put money back in your pockets, okay? So that we don't have to raise your water bill, which he just read, so we don't have to raise your sewer bill next year actually this year, okay? In fact, you know, I don't understand why we have to raise it when we have supposed surplus in the sewer fund and the water fund. We shouldn't have any surplus. We should have reserve funds, but this is not a business. That means that we've been overcharging them. We shouldn't have a surplus in our budget. This is not a business. You shouldn't be giving us money for us to hold on without any interest. Okay? If it doesn't cost that much to run your water, we shouldn't have a surplus. We shouldn't have a surplus in our sewer. Now, we can establish reserve funds if we have, uh, and we do, we have a lot of infrastructure that we need to update. But for some reason, we're not establishing reserve funds. We're just 
kind of hoarding it as a surplus. That's not legal. We shouldn't be doing that. So who has the answer? Trustee Albert. That's right. Trustee Albert. Hey guys, you kind of help me out. Right. I'm in the middle of a boat. Wow. I'm in the middle of a boat. This is how money goes missing. Right? Wait, Gina, what did you say? We're in the middle of a boat. Yeah, I know. So this Trustee Albert's next. Yes, we've moved for money. For the budget. I said yes. Okay. We've Trustee DeSalvo. Services for adolescents, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Trustee DeSalvo. Yeah, I, I'm going to vote, but just to cover a couple quick things, all right? Since this is, again, if we if there's a motion and there's a second and you want to have discussion, you just shout out discussion, but that's okay. We're, we're going to we'll talk real quick. I know we're in the middle of a vote. <laughs> The reason why there's surplus accounts in water and sewer, which has been brought up by members of the board several times, that we should have you know, funds in, in those accounts to be able to pay for stuff, whether it's painting tanks or putting new pipes in or buying a vehicle or whatever. So whether I have a capital reserve account that I take those extra funds and put them in there, or I have a surplus account, you know, it's... It's a, it's, it's a shell game. It, 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 it doesn't necessarily matter because the board has to approve any expenditure for capital, whether it's a surplus account or a reserve account. And we do have reserve accounts in water and sewer for vehicles um, and things like that. The reason why we looked at increasing the water amount by approximately $6.20 for the initial charge of the first 5,000 gallons not the per gallon rate after of a thousand. Every 5,000 gallons you get charged right now, $88.80 for the first 5,000 gallons. A lot of people use the minimum, especially if they're single folks or elderly folks or just a, you know, a couple, they just use the minimum. So we didn't want to look at the increase per after the 5,000 gallons, which is $4.63 for every 1,000 gallons after that. So those people who are on a budget, they can try to budget that extra $6.20. But we are anticipating that we are going to do some major capital improvements so that we want to try to generate a little extra income to help cushion the blow from the infrastructure improvements that we're doing. Uh, that we are taking the task for sometimes by board members and residents, which is fine. It's just it's part, of the, part of the process. So we anticipated doing... Uh, six dollars, six dollars and twenty cents for the initial five thousand gallons, and we did not touch the rate for after to not so that businesses and folks who are trying to budget, they can basically just budget that six dollars and twenty cents times two for the year. Um, of course, for this year, we'll just we're just going to start November for the new charge. So you'll be able to budget that extra twelve dollars uh, if you use the minimum. So we weren't looking to you know, create a slurry of expenses, um, but it's just, you know, we're anticipating the capital improvements in Ondera Park, Sandy Grove, um, Cragston eventually maybe, uh, so we're just looking forward, That's, we're just trying to look forward. On another note, although the resolution does say general fund budget in the amount of 5579183 just a reminder for the folks at home and in the audience, that, that, that is not the amount that we levy in tax for properties. Okay, so we are anticipating for the 2022-23 uh, real property taxes of 3.2, 3.288, uh, $3,288,890. So I just want that to understand. The other revenues come from different sources, sales tax, mortgage tax, stuff like that. So with that long no explanation, money. with that, yes. with that long explanation, yes. Yes. It's all just like all Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got a vote going on. I, I don't even know where we're at. Trustee Phillips. Yes. Mayor D'Anafria. Uh, yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Again, I want to say that the board, the entire board, worked very hard on this. And just to, uh, you know, the school which left, but you're with the school board, right? So, you know, this affects you too. This affects everyone. Um, we had nine, just shy of $1 million, $960,000 reduced in assessments, which that will affect school, it affects the uh, town, almost a million dollars. Um, 
we have, um, this is not a, uh, necessarily a, a complaint, it just is that churches are exempt, the library is exempt, the fire department's exempt, village hall, town hall. You add all those up, there's quite a few, comes to $37.5 million of assessment that um, doesn't uh, generate tax dollars. Um, I also want to point out one good news, one piece of good news. We all were um, um, inconvenienced, some places, some streets more than others, with all the new gas lines that Central Hudson put in this past year. And a lot of folks don't realize, but the utilities under the ground, i.e. Central Hudson, um, um, are assessed also, just like our houses are. Their, their pipes are assessed. And so when they put in a lot of, like they just recently did, again, it was inconvenient, I know. But this, we have better safety now also. But uh, that, that increase in new piping um, generated just shy of 1700000 So that's good. You know, that's, that, that's a good one. Got new pipes and they pay more. Okay. Um, let's see. So we have a resolution um, for a handicap spot. You have that before you. It's for uh, you have the resolution before you. It's for Perry Avenue. Uh, this is a uh, handicapped person with several uh, issues, um, in particular walking and. Um, I think we should help him in putting a spot in front of his home. Again, when you, I want everyone to know when you request these handicapped spots and it's given and it's all marked out in front of your house with a sign, it's for anyone that's handicapped, not just the homeowner. So we need to keep that in mind. But um, you, have it, uh, you have the motion before you. If you care to make a motion to uh, do this, that would be good. I'll make a motion. Uh, the 8 Perry Avenue, Avenue. I'm yes. sorry. Second. Mo All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. All right, next we have uh, a request to for this to be approved and for authorization for me to sign. This is uh, uh, to approve Arnold Construction Company bid of $1,493,800 for the Ondiora Park Wastewater Collection System Rehabilitation Project, i.e. sewer lining, and authorize me to sign the notice of award per the recommendation of the village uh, engineer. Who is here tonight? You have anything, Todd, you want to add? No, um, I mean, I'll just say that the uh, the estimate came in about twelve thousand dollars less than what, what we had estimated to be. Uh, so the numbers uh, from the beginning of the project till now, where we're uh, you know, ready to award it, uh, have been have remained pretty consistent. And, uh, I think that this will alleviate approximately thirty to forty thousand gallons of groundwater infiltrating into the wastewater treatment plant on a daily basis, which will reduce. Uh, some of the loading and costs uh, for chemicals and whatnot the plant. So I think it's a, uh, it's a great project to move forward with. It's uh, part of the infrastructure rehabilitation that we're, we're looking uh, to try to do here over the next uh, couple of years to uh, take the burden off the wastewater treatment plant itself. Um, and unless I've asked that, any questions, I, I think it's uh, a good bid. They're a great company. We've, we've worked with them before, and uh, they, they're ready to get moving on. Okay. Is there a motion? Quick question. Yeah. On the uh, the lining, which you know, maybe everybody knows, I, which is, goes inside the sewer pipe mm -hmm. that's current so, sewer pipes that are in the ground now. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a total evasive. No, if there's only a couple program. of locations where where we're actually going to have to dig based on ma major uh, breaks and whatnot. So I think that there's five or six locations within on your park that will actually have to do some repairs. But the majority of it is just going to be working from manhole to manhole. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be 
you know, there may be some delay with uh, if we're out in the middle of the road, we might have, have to stop a car for a couple of minutes, but there's not going to be any major potholes or anything like that created within the, uh, within the roadways. Uh, two more questions, quick ones. How old is this technology? How old is this technology? I think how this particular type of this particular material. one is probably probably less than 25 years old. Um, it's it's become every every day it goes by they get, they get better and better. Now it's actually what we're doing in most areas is actually a structural lining. So we're not only are we lining the pipe to increase the actual uh, resistance within the pipe, we're also adding uh, uh, additional structural support to it. The 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 lines that are on your park right now are actually eight and ten inch clay tile pipes that are about three feet sections. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, what we call infiltration into it from the groundwater, as well as weed, uh, not weeds, uh, uh, roots, roots and everything else growing into it. So there's blockages, there's clap, there's been two collapses in the last uh, three years out there, uh, one along um, uh, between Knox and I think uh, Clinton, uh, and another one around the corner. So it, it's really uh, uh, you know, increasing the longevity of that pipe. We're, we're looking at adding 50 to 80 years worth of one Okay, that was my last question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. I make a motion. A motion, is there a second? A second. second. Oh. second. Guerrero. Oh. All in favor? Yes. Yes. This is what's good Opposed? for the day. Motion carried. All right, next I have um, uh, Kind of a continuation with the sewer, not with the sewer lining, but with the sewer plant uh, to uh, have approved wastewater treatment plant sludge digester slash generator contract, six hundred seventy-two thousand dollars from Aventus Construction Company. We've had Aventus here a few times, an electrical bid of two hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred dollars from S. Uh, excuse me, Robert. Excuse me, Ray S. Patel and Pantel, Pantel and approved. The mayor to sign the notice of award as recommended by Magui, Hauser, and Etzel. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Authorization for the village and engineer to put out uh, for bid uh, the community development block grant for 2021 uh, grant that we received. Um, this will uh, replace some windows, uh, patio, uh, drop ceiling, LED lights, and I believe cabinets for the kitchen. Cabinets for the kitchen and some ductwork. Uh uh, duck work. I always forget the duck work. Okay. So this is for you to put a package together to go out and bid. Packages together. It's already approved for the county. It's just a matter of not putting out the bid. 125000 grant we have? That's correct. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next, we have a letter from Vision, um, which is good news. They want to bring back again. Um, they haven't missed a year with the, uh, even during COVID, um, the farmer's market. Um, from June 12 to October 30, hours of operation are 9 to 1 on Sundays. The lot, the parking lot across from Sacred Heart. So moved. Um, Insurance is on the yeah. on the back. Motion by Jim. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, next, we have an event at the same parking lot across from Sacred Heart on June 11, from 8, 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, TVs, computers, printers, copiers, fax machines, cell phones, VCRs, and DVs. DVDs. DVDs. Um, if you have any of that that you're looking to discard, uh, not in your trash receptacle, but bring it to the parking lot across from Sacred Heart on June 11 from 8 to noon. 
I think that should be pretty successful. Um, Saturday, it is. And you have here before you the event form and the insurance on the back. Is Nothing more is needed, Gina? Is, is that just for residents of the village and the town? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, town of Highlands e waste. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Motion carried. The antennas, the cell antennas are still, there's been meetings and structural engineers on the roof, got to make a change, they're going to have to make a change to the back of the building where there's a fire escape, it's kind of, it's probably the original fire escape, but that's up to them to do. Um, there's been some very good discussions with a company on West Point uh, about um, a, a parking garage here in the village. Um, the Main Street grant information needs to be in, in when, Gina? Soon. This Friday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Schumacher's report for Bog Meadow will have at the end of the month. Hazen and Sawyer will have soon for the... I think it might even be as early as uh, late next week. Yeah, that one was sooner than Schumacher. Okay. Okay, I don't think I have any excellent Okay, any comments from the board? Um, Good. So, a couple of things. A lot of people are here today, and I think... The biggest news in the past week is uh, about you. Did you want to make any statement about no, that? No, no, not tonight. The charges on? Yeah. No statements? Okay. No. All right, so I would like to give you an update on the building department. The uh, building department email really has... Did you get a second email from them? A second them? email from... The girl down there at the building department. Uh, the monthly report. Yeah, then she sent out a correction. But go ahead. You didn't get that one? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. You got it then. Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for taking care of me. Absolutely. All right. So I, um, the building department had 23 permit applications received, 25 permits issued, 43 certificates of compliance. This is just for the month, okay, the month of April. Two certificates of occupancy issued, 42 building permit inspections done, a violation notice, just one, was issued, six municipal searches completed, and uh, uh, one planning board application received, and another $10,300 of total fees collected. Uh, it's really amazing what the building department has done, dealt with, especially with the leadership of both Phil Hanawal and Richard Sullivan. They've really done a, much more accomplishments than when we had a building inspector uh, who resigned. Uh, and, and I think we should give them credit for it. I think uh, a lot of people on the board has been um, bad-mouthing them, and that's really not, uh, th th that's undeserved, a bad-mouthing. Uh, they've uh, partnered up with a consulting firm, outside consulting firm, to help him review items that need attention, like certificates of occupancies. Uh, one thing that is close to uh, uh, Gary's uh, heart is about the canine sanitation. And it's really been awful. I live on Main Street, and there is just a lot of dog poop. It's been mentioned um, at the board meeting many, many times. But really, this is part of uh, community policing that we need enforced. Frank, it's actually part of the village legislation that the police can help us enforce. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We definitely see anybody. I've been watching more closely now, even from a distance, to see. Obviously, for there, they pick it up, but if uh, I watch from a distance to watch the dog owners, 
to ensure that they do pick up the dog feces. If they don't, we will definitely take it apart. Because it is a it is a mess. I understand. All right. Thank you. Thank you for helping the building department okay. with that. And uh, also uh, enforcing certain things about uh, property management. Is that something that you guys can help us with too, the building department, if we were to ask for it? Uh, wait, wait a minute, uh, Frank. That's not yours to answer. Okay. Okay. But it's in the uh, general legislation right. of the well, Village we, we, of we, Highland it, Falls. That concern, which I don't disagree with, can come up with the, uh, the chief on how he or she will uh, handle that, if at all. I see. Okay. So this is a small village of 3,800 people, and that's the kind of community policing that we really need, right? Uh, it's it's a safe neighborhood. Everybody's friendly. I know. I live on Main Street, and everybody's been completely friendly towards me. So, you know. Um, so you mentioned the police chief. Is that something we, I, I heard that we offered a contract and that she's accepted? Is that? Yeah, I believe it will be on our May 16th <coughs> agenda. And May 16th. So we did make an offer. And that's, is, why was it not given to the public too? Why, why haven't we announced that? Because we're going to vote on it on the 16th. That's when it would come to the public. Oh, I see. So we already offered her a contract, she's already accepted, and now we're going to vote? It's not a contract. It's a resolution. So, so that we'll all vote on she it. hasn't been offered a contract? It's not, a con not? it's not a contract, it's a resolution. She hasn't been offered the job? Y yes. Okay. So we have already offered the job to a new police chief. So I welcome her. Uh, we really need, we really need someone. Uh, she has really great credentials. Right. I'm glad. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another thing, uh, town re recreation, Aaron Park, he's mentioned this, he sent an email to the entire board, uh, and he had concerns about us dumping dirty water in that little league field. That's really felt pretty filthy for the kids. Um, I know that there was a reply by, from the mayor saying that this was just a one-time incident because of a leak in Laurel Lane, but you know, Everybody's witnessed it, <coughs> live in the Rope Park area, that that's not a one-time thing. Apparently, the street sweeper water has, is being dumped in the field over there by Rope Park. No, that's not, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's not accurate. We don't dump anything in, a, in any field, any field, at any time, at, on any day, throughout the whole year. That's not done. So that would be... It's terrible to say. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Didn't you get that email from Aaron? Aaron was, uh, the email, as I remember it, um, talked about water that had uh, seeped down uh, to the outfield of uh, first base. And um, um, I think, I don't know if it was on a weekend, when Monday came, I don't know what day it was, I spoke to John Jones. And uh, he informed me that Tam, who had been part of the uh, company we called in to fix the water leak on uh, Laurel Lane, um, had gone up there and um, unloaded whatever he had picked up out of the hole, dirt, soil, rocks. And of course, there's water involved in that mixture. And uh, it ran down the hill to this area. So that's, that's what happened. It was a mistake, it was corrected, and I want to say it'll never happen again, but whenever you use that word, never, but I'll say it'll never happen again. Um, I think that Tam might have been, now this is me thinking that Tam might have been used to going up there in the winter. Tam comes to the community quite a bit whenever we have a leak, and um, I, I think that uh, maybe Tam was going up there in the winter time when we had breaks, maybe in the fall, uh, times of the year when Little League isn't going on, and, uh, and, and that's where he was told to go. Um, but a mistake was made that it was the beginning of Little League season, and it won't happen again. Okay. So. so you did answer him, and you did say that there was dumping of dirty water. 
I don't know. I don't know unless you have my reply there exactly yeah, what it I said. I don't that's exactly what you oh, said. Oh, do you have it there? I do. Okay, read it. What no, did I say? I don't want to read it. What? No, I'm I, saying no, it's, please. It's a no, it was short. I'm it was saying it's a, it's a summary. And you said your so, what? And no, please what I'm read it. It's you short. Is that the people of Grove Park <laughs> has no witnessed figure. this dirty water being dumped there? on multiple occasions. It's not just a one-time thing. And we have to believe the people of the village. If they're telling you that, they're not doing it just to hurt your feelings. They're telling it to you because they want it fixed. They're telling it to us as the board. Didn't I, just, we want didn't it I just say that it's not a one -time TAM goes thing. up? It's not I, a one-time thing. Didn't I say that TAM goes up in that area that we own? It's not TAM. So the water from uh, the sweeper is getting dumped in that field regularly. And anyway, okay. Okay. we should stop doing that. Okay. okay. You're right. It's not healthy. Okay. Um, uh, also, with the town recreation, uh, Aaron Falk has uh, uh, been able to get $1,500 uh, in grant money. And the money is to be used for supplies to support our all-inclusive programming for special needs families. This is a lot of work. I mean, he gets he gets a lot of these things done uh, uh, for the benefit of the community, and I really just give him uh, just kudos for for Mr. Falk. He anticipates more money coming down the pipeline for for more of the same. One more thing, we had given uh, a baseball team again, Rose Park, about two three months worth of uh, of uh, use on Sundays for their baseball games for about three, four, five hours every Sunday. But uh, yeah, but a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, they and this is a team that has time and time again broken the rules. But for some reason we've been giving them special privileges. Okay. A couple of weeks ago they actually drove an unauthorized vehicle on the field, on the wet field. And uh, I think this is one more law, one more rule that they've broken. And I think we should revoke, revoke that agreement with them. So I would like to make a motion that we revoke the agreement that we made with uh, the team captain, I think it's Ivan, is his name, who you made the liaison for the Hispanic Latino group in the village. Uh, the people who are living in Rowe Park has time and time again complained about this team. And instead of revoking their privileges, we've actually given them more, uh, more privileges. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? If not, the motion's dead. Brian. Yeah, uh, this uh, James Ripper, he's been a part-time police officer with us for a long time. He served us well. He works well with the young people. He's out, see the Highland Falls paper. He's playing ball with kids. He's talking to kids. He deals well with our community. Uh, this is another way, though, of trying to prevent the high cost of overtime. Of course, if I had my wish list, I'd have another police officer on, but... I didn't get my wish list. Maybe next time. But he is a good candidate. I'm glad he's on it. Uh, thanks to Orange County DA Hoover and Lori Tortell, our county legislator. We've got a grant to provide mental health services to children at the center. What they're going to have to do at the school, and if those of us who read the research, we're going to find a lot of kids who are well behind in school because of the computer assets, especially kids with severe learning disabilities. The insurance policies are not always held by everyone in this community. It doesn't get you into a neurologist, and it doesn't get you into specialists at all times. So I'm glad about this grant, but I can tell you now that the schools are going to be opened up and they're going to be told, you must provide services for these kids. It's going to cost more. <coughs> so now people have you know, decide on it, whether we're going to help the children of this community or we're not. I would hope that we do. 
Saturday we had a celebration of people who make a difference, Memorial Park. We honored Chief Ryan Falk, Fort Montgomery Fire Department, Malik Johnson, the third grade teacher, Reverend Durrett Richards, Navy vet and community advocate, and Fireman Dennis McCutcheon. Dennis is the one who pulled a kid out of the uh, fire in the Bronx and made the New York Times. And I never met such a humble person. He would not speak, and then he said a few words, and he said it was really a team effort, although he was the one pulling the person out. And that's it. Thank you, Brian. Gary? Um, I'm just to uh, let you know uh, the water, uh, our reserve, uh, the bottle balance up are very, very good. Um, that's because of all the rain and because of everybody doing the right thing. Uh, the weather is getting nicer, so please, uh, <coughs> Let's still keep doing the right thing by, uh, you know, conserving our water as much as possible. Uh, I think, uh, Ms. Anderson, you can still get a hold of uh, containers for, for collecting water, correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, I mean, it's a really good thing to do. Um, uh, I mean, I see some people washing cars. These people got three cars and they wash them every day. I don't understand it, but, you know, it's, it's not me paying that water bill. I pay my own, but, uh, you know, so, um, but... No, and then uh, like Melanie said, you know, with the with the dog mess, it is uh, it is terrible because it's not fair to the dog, it's not fair to people walking. You can't bend over and pick it up. Hell, I'm old, I pick it up. I mean, what the heck, you know? I mean, you know, so not as old as Mr. Flynn, but uh, but you know, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's real. It, it's a shame. It just it makes the it makes the problems that we already have in the community a lot worse when somebody doesn't do the right thing, you know. And then you know, especially like bring in your garbage cans, you know, don't leave them out in the, you know. If you got dirty streets and people don't take care of property, it just makes the whole village look bad. So, but that's all I have. So, thank you, everybody. Yeah, just real quick on the uh, sewer plant. Um, in tonight's budget, we, there was no change in the rate for sewer. Well, uh, just to emphasize that, which is the higher of the two between water and sewer. And we did the two projects we did approve tonight, uh, although we went over them and they were just touched on the agenda. Uh, we talked about it a couple meetings ago. Uh, the one project is for the boiler heat exchange system, right? Which will we'll, we'll eventually, hopefully, get off of oil. Yeah, oil. off of oil. Yeah. Um, which is good, you know, down the road for savings. Could as, be 500 a month. Yeah, could be, could be we'll now, but that's at the current that. prices. More now. Yeah, more than that. Um, and then on top of that was it was uh, that the, the generator, he, uh, the heat exchange, and the boiler, and then the, the electrical. For all that too, so those two improvements, two big improvements at the sewer plant, um, and uh, you know it'll probably come up maybe next meeting or the following. You know the CDBG that we approved tonight. Uh, you know we have to look for actually next year's That's money. Right. So uh, you know we, I had have been in Village Hall I think Thursday, uh, no uh, Wednesday or Tuesday of last week. And uh, it had come up to talk about different projects, and I know that in speaking with the county, uh, if you go for 88 projects, you actually can go after more dollars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I said we might need to think about trying to get creative and try to go for the most we can get. So that will come up as we move along in the year. That's it. Can I ask Mr. No. Some question? No, I can't. I can't. I gotta follow, I gotta keep this, otherwise it goes crazy. No, I uh, okay, yeah, I want. Excuse me. Song. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It says it on that. No, it's not. Okay, All right, I'm going to continue here. Um, Aaron. Yeah, and I. I more than I more than announced it. We're, it's, it's not on. It's not on my agenda. Where you're saying. The sewer bill is a percentage okay, of the you. water bill. Okay. So, that too so um, let me say something about Aaron Falk. Usage. He um, had a rain date, Usage. which yeah. he had to use. Excuse me. He had a rain date and uh, for the Easter egg hunt, which is extremely successful. Uh, how many kids were there, you think? Did you, were you over there? No, you weren't. No. Yeah. For what? Easter egg hunt. Oh, yeah, sorry. Lot, there was a lot of folks, right? Very yeah. So uh, Aaron's doing a good job, and uh, he continues to come up with uh, new events, you know, which is good. Uh, the building department, um, Phil Handelwall is a code enforcement officer, not a building inspector. I hope someday he'll take the test and pass, and the town would do well by hiring him. 
Uh, Phil, um, we probably talk at least three times a week, um, and he's extremely professional. He's, ex he's, he's there. If he's not there, he calls me right back. I have department head meetings. He comes to most of them. He doesn't really have to. Um, um, he's, uh, he deserves a raise. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, uh, Jim, I had public comment already. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, are there two police officers over there? Yeah, actually, there's three, sir. Oh, okay. So uh, we have Frank Lillis, we have um, Sergeant Ruger, and who's the other one? Sure. Yes, well, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, Frank and uh, Sergeant Brewer, I asked you uh, a minute ago, do, do, you know, and this is only your, you know, your knowledge, did you, uh, have you gotten any complaints while you're on about the softball team? And you both immediately replied no. Um, I know that to be. I check every, I check every Monday after a Saturday, after a Sunday game. Sure. So, so um, can, I, can I, 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 sir, sir, can they, I appreciate can you, can it. Can you answer that? Uh, uh, sir, hang on. No, no, what? Me? Hang on. No, <laughs> what are you talking no. about? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you guys for being here. Could you answer I'll that? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Sir. There's a motion by Gary. Second. Second. Second by Jim. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Yes. Motion. Thank you for coming and listening.